Everyone tells you to pick a side, iPhone or Android, Windows or Mac. But what if you didn't have to? What if all your devices could just work together smoothly? Well, I've done just that. Thanks to some very clever software, I've managed to get my iPhone, my Android, Windows and Mac all working together seamlessly. And honestly, it's the most freeing I've ever felt using my tech. I've used iPhones for years, but this year I switched to Android because I wanted more freedom and customizability. But everything just fell apart. Messages, photos and videos, files, contacts, calendars, email. It was just a mess. And it just got me thinking, I'm really sick of just being limited to what devices I can use. I just want to use whatever I want. So I built my own cross-platform ecosystem, I guess. It's private, secure, and doesn't rely on big companies either. So I'm going to show you how I do it. So these are the devices I'm working with. We've got my MacBook Air, which I use for productivity and day-to-day -day tasks. We've got my iPhone and S25 Ultra, which are kind of both my main phone right now. And then we've got my Windows PC, which I mainly use for heavy editing workloads and gaming. The challenge is making all these devices actually talk to one another. Let's start off with Notes. For Notes, I use standard Notes. It's end-to-end -end encrypted, pretty easy to use, and most importantly, it syncs with every platform. So I can start a note on my Mac, and pick it up on my iPhone. It's really useful. Now for the big one, photos and video. I wanted something that didn't rely on a certain company's clouds, so I kind of made my own using a Ugreen NAS. If you don't know what a NAS is, it's basically just like having your own personal private cloud. You host it yourself, it runs off your network and your internet. What's great about this Ugreen one is it comes with the Ugreen NAS app, which allows you to back up all your photos and videos from your Android or iPhone and they all get stored together in one album. When you're out and you're taking photos, they also sync remotely to the NAS and you can connect to the NAS when you're out, pretty much just like having your own cloud. So unlike paying for subscriptions like for Google Drive and iCloud, it's all there on your Ugreen NAS, no monthly fee and it's yours. But I'm not stupid, I'm also using Proton Drive as well, which is probably one of the best end-to-end -end encrypted cloud services. I sync all of my photos and videos on there, and it just ensures that if my NAS ever goes down, I've got a copy on there as well. It's not quite as advanced as my NAS, it doesn't have AI album scanning or anything like that, but it does the job. For passwords, I use NordPass. It's a cross-platform password tool, works across every device, there's a browser extension for your computers, and it can generate passwords for you, auto-fill them in, and yeah, it's a very nice secure password vault. Not sponsored, but a very good service to use. As I said before, I'm still using the Proton Suite, so I'm using stuff like Proton Mail and Proton Calendar, which is built in. Proton Mail is great because it's end-to-end -end encrypted, though I don't think that really matters for email, but one thing that's good about it is no ads and no tracking. I can check emails from my Windows PC and my Mac, and I can also update my calendar from my phones as well. The Proton apps work across all devices, and they're really good. Everything stays synced together, and I don't need to rely on Apple's Mail app or Gmail's tracking. And speaking of Google's tracking, here's where you can't escape it, and that is with Google Messages. Google Messages is pretty much the only way you're going to be able to get RCS chats on Android. So unfortunately, I had to go with it. But Google Messages is good because you can access it on your browser as well. So whether I'm on PC or Mac, I can read and reply to messages. However, unfortunately, there's no app for iOS. If I want to use cross-platform messaging, my only options are stuff like WhatsApp, Telegram and Signal. Now for the big one, file sharing. How can we get airdrop alternatives for Android, iOS, Windows and Mac? Local send, of course. It is really good. It works across all devices. You can ping files directly to your PC or Mac. It gives all your devices some unique, funny looking names and it just works really well. Next up, we've got KD Connect, which is absolutely brilliant for sharing your clipboards. This was one of the things that I really missed between using both the Samsung and the Apple ecosystem. But finally, they can all just work together thanks to KDE Connect. It can also do some cool things as well, like double as a trackpad for your computer. And you can also send files through it as well, but I personally prefer local send. And you can even control media playback using it as well. It really is the app that can do it all. 
and it works pretty well as just a small low-key app running in the background of your computer. If you want a more seamless PC to Android relationship, then Link to Windows is probably your best bet. You can do all kinds of stuff such as transfer your clipboard, share photos and files. You can even read and respond to notifications from your Windows PC as well. There is a Link to Windows option for iPhone users, but it's a bit more limiting. So Android and PC is probably your best bet for that. And yes, with my PC, I'm using a very nice keyboard from Keytron. This is their K8HE keyboards, which works perfectly across Windows and Mac with just one switch and looks very nice on my desk too. Thank you to Keytron for sending that over. Now, of course, this cross-platform ecosystem that I've built is definitely not perfect. File sharing relies on Wi-Fi rather than Bluetooth, which means if your Wi-Fi signal is a bit patchy or your devices are on different Wi-Fi networks, it won't work. The other annoying thing is if you're using a laptop like me with all of these third-party programs running in the background, if you close the lid on your laptop and put it to sleep and then open it again, this can reset the connection between your devices and can actually confuse it. You actually spend more time faffing around trying to get the devices to recognize each other than you would actually sending the files. So sometimes it might just be easier to email it to yourself the good old fashioned way. But hey, compared to being locked into one company's ecosystem, the fact I can choose whichever device I want to use is definitely better. If you're sick of being stuck into one ecosystem or just don't see the point of them in the first place, then this is probably your best bet. Huge thanks to Ugreen for help making this setup possible. I'll leave the links in the description down below of their NAS range. Make sure to go check them out. And it's great for keeping all your data yours and in one place. And if you want to see how I turn my Android phone into an iPhone alternative, then click on your screen right now and I'll see you there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.